Hey, I'm Xavier Horowitz. I've been skateboarding most of my life. It's been one of my main obsessions for as long as I can remember. And it's allowed me to travel and meet new people. And it's what keeps me driven and keeps me going because it gives me the opportunity to see new places and visit new towns. It also lets me express myself with clothes and fashion and it all kind of amalgamates into one thing that I love to do, which is skate, dress as wild as possible and meet new people and be a stranger in new cities. When you skate, you get to see the world at a different angle and the only things that matter are right in front of you. Milan was like a whirlwind. It was hot, it was busy. We were running around with our bags, catching trains, doing this, doing that. And we hopped the train to Lugano, which was a complete 180. Switzerland's a really special place to me because I was born in Geneva. My family decided to move back to South Africa when I was three years old. So it's nice to come back with new eyes and a new perspective. Lugano as a city is like pristine. And you go up this one hill and there's this place Morel, which is an abandoned car garage that's been turned into an art center. There's people living there. It's pretty much a free space. Yeah, the place, like, was born five years ago. A place for everything, like music, art, and the atelier, beer, crafting, and all together. The place is the base for a lot of people. And Lugano is not very common to find places like these. We're here with Kevin, trying to find his uh, art in the, in the basement. Yeah. Experiencing the space. <laughs> What happens in the basement stays in the basement. That was thanks mostly to skateboarding. I started skateboarding 10 years ago. As you know, the skate community is pretty big in the world and like art stuff. And then I met a lot of people. And then I started to draw and to do some stuff, to do some trips and everything is, is thanks to skateboarding to me like my lifestyle and my art stuff and my living. Yeah, this one is a funny one because I was painting it and then suddenly I, I finished the paint. So that's why I made a written of Finito Il Colore. That's, um, I done the paint. Normally I don't have a lot of money to buy some really expensive and good stuff material. So whatever I found around, normally I try to make it like an art piece or make something happen together. If I ever read the paint, I'm gonna use that. I'm not like, oh, I want a pink one. I just have a red one, so that's okay. Yeah, this one has the, this kind of monster too. Like, if you want to say it is like my sign in this period. And I really love paint on mirrors because it's uh, an uncommon background. Like a big, big house, like a dream house. You can do almost whatever you want, like at two o'clock in the morning. To me, it's perfect. We decided to go to one of the local plazas, pretty close to the city center. There was a really cool Wally spot. It was a sculpture that you could Wally. And yeah, it was just a fun session. Kevin, Patrick, Alex, just a few friends having a good time. The community is not really big, but everyone is super cool. We 
met up with a local skateboarder and warrior called Zep, and he owns a bar called Oops Bar. And it's the local skate bar, kind of the clubhouse for all the skaters. When I bought this bar, it was called Snoopy. I didn't have any money to have a new sign outside, and that sign was kind of cool. And I said, OK, I want to change the name. So I started thinking about moving the letters from Snoopy. We talked about the options were like spoon, bar, or some others. And then we came up with oops, and uh, oops sounded cool. <laughs> that was like the cheapest way. And it ended up being a very cool name for a bar, because oops. Since I've been skating, like, most of my life, all my skate friends started hanging around here, and friendly bar, all-inclusive bar, like anybody can hang out here if they show respect to, the, to each other and are friendly. So I spent so much money here that I could be the owner. <laughs> because for me, skateboarding is just to ride, to be able to ride and whatever, but it's also a lifestyle if you want, no? or in ways like a mentality. I know if I met a skater, is almost for sure it's cool people. And when I met warriors, I say, okay, this is the people who I want to spend my time. So the Warriors is a skate crew that was founded in Switzerland. And over the years, obviously, as some skaters get older, they indoctrinate new Warriors. And it's just become this movement in Switzerland. Um, there's a giant list. I actually had a list of the names in the bar. And I found so many people I know that I didn't know were, were Warriors. But something that has founded from somebody that has been given to someone else, and then someone else take it and bring it on, and Warriors still around. I found my place in Warriors as a photographer. For me, photography is it's part of skate because, of course, like video is part of skate, and like illustri illustration or drawing is part of skate. The skate is music, art, drawing, photography, whatever. We're at Morale, and we're getting some portraits taken by Anthony. We're going to create some art today. We said, let's have fun with it. We're making no sense. What I'm more like, because I only shoot with the natural light, so is. I don't know where I'm going to shoot. This is what I like, because you're here alone, and you say, OK, come on, I have, to, I have to do that. And sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's easy. Like here, where whatever you put your lens, you have a, a photo. Anthony came and he was like, we're having fun today. Yeah, we're not yeah. being serious, let's be silly. And that's my brand. I never take yourself too much seriously. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You've got to laugh at yourself, dude. Like, look at this. Yeah, you can do Would something. Would you invite this axe killer to your party? Yes. We were in Lugano for one day. We had to leave the postcard, so we packed our bags, we got on the train, we get to Basel which is another beautiful town. It's a little bit more um, flat, not so much mountain range, but just a beautiful city right on the river. Claudia and Oli showed us around. <laughs> Your country breakfast is ready. <laughs> Oli's an amazing guy. He's a skate legend from Switzerland. Cheesy, cheesy potatoes. Very Swiss. My office, which is where I do most of the planning and preparations for the skate park building I'm doing. There's a DIY project 
quite a few of them here in Basel and all over Switzerland, and then also commercial skate park building. What was in that cheese? <laughs> so we're at the spot of the new mini ramp we built. Uh, it's a project on an interim use of land that's going to be around for hopefully three, four, maybe five years. Um, at some point there's going to be apartments built here and people living. Um, but for now we have our little um, fun space here with the mini ramp. The whole skate community pitched in. Now we're going to uncover it and skate it for the first time. So it's going to be interesting to see how, how everything works. When we unboxed the, the mini ramp yesterday, it was such a special moment and we created it and then you can skate it. I started late um, with skateboarding, I started at 27. I was into tennis for a long time and I did that for 20 years. And then I needed something else, a new challenge. And I started with skateboarding. Almost every time you see her skate, you can see that she's progressing and wants to learn. And, and I thought I was a, you know, an addicted skateboarder, like skate rat, and, but she's you know, you know, skating at least twice as much as I do. Building stuff kind of came hand in hand with skateboarding back in the day, because there wasn't any ramps or anything unless you went out and built something. So it started with you know, little jump ramps that we built, and then it just snowballed from there. So Alex Pipos is a local skateboarder and architect and tattoo artist. most of them are wanted to be an architect, what I, what I am now. And about five years ago, I started to be interested in how the technique of tattooing is, is going, how to do this. I wondered, I want, want to do this by myself, not on people, just to know how the technique is working. And I asked a friend, he's tattooing for more than 10 years, and he taught me to, how to do it and what kind of machine I should buy. And that's how I started. I like this, like, bold style. Mm. Like, Dainty lines and then like a like lot of black. Cactus is cool. I think skateboarding influenced every part of my life because I'm doing this for I don't know 30 years now. So it's it was always part of, of everything I'm doing. And for sure. My drawing is influenced by skateboarding, but also by other art stuff. Like, I like to go to a museum and be inspired for tattooing. After having a tattoo session with friends for, for a couple of hours, it's like you have this, this feeling of, of being satisfied. This work's amazing, eh? The finest lines I've seen in a long time. Just a really cool guy in general. I couldn't be happier with this. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> Concrete never really came into the picture until when we got the chance to build the Black Cross Ball at Pontus South. It was on a, on a piece of land that they built apartments on, so had to destroy the black cross ball. We had our final black cross ball party, tore it down, and then a week later we started building apartments. So everyone still had that um, the memory of the black cross ball, which was you know, quite steep and tight. And so when we when we built Portland, we wanted to kind of replicate some of that. 
once it was finished, we realized, wow, this is going to be hard to skate. And you know, not everything worked out the way we thought it would. But over time, you get used to the steepness and the, you know, the tight corners and everything. We had a few people talk to us about the president of skateboarding in Basel. So I was expecting a guy, you know, white tee, maybe some cocky dickies. The president turned out to be a wild man. Bhatti is the unofficial president of Swiss skateboarding. He brings hype and energy to every session he's at. I feel like he's just raw, he's punk. And I think that's what skating's about, and I feel like that's why people call him the president. He's just full of energy, he's a good vibe, and I haven't laughed that much in so long. No fuss, <laughs> not just the beer. Just... <laughs> the president. Frontside drive! As everywhere in skateboarding, you have a lot of creative um, people around. Stan, for example, like with Portland, he discovered um, concrete as a material and then started pouring um, his skulls and all the other little sculptures he does. He's a carpenter by trade, and so the, the wood stuff that he does is probably more like first nature for him. And then concrete came a little bit later. My grandfather showed me how to work, do everything by yourself. Just do whatever you need, do it yourself, make it yourself, with whatever you find. That's a frame. But like all those crazy patterns, it's just... Stan's an interesting guy. He's the wood and cement mad scientist. Raver Dave, where have you been? He was supposed to come home last Friday, he only came back on Tuesday. He's blind. He's, he's blind from all the raving. Long in Berlin. <gasps> Show me to Bachheim. <laughs> I think I found what I want to do in life. 15 years ago, I was like, what should I do out of my life? It was only skateboarding and partying and drinking, and that was it. It's good to, to know what you are doing. You know? What is the perfect goal? We formed an association um, four years ago, and um, it's called Rock and Roll. There weren't many girls around, and I wanted to bring all the girls in Switzerland together. That's why we organized some events, just to get to know the other girls and do a session together. I started skateboarding once when I was 11 years old and stopped after one month because I was like a girl and just a boy skated and I got bullied and everything. And since then, it's kind of stuck in my head. And then I found Claudia. And I started to skate with her, with the Rock and Rollers, on a girls' weekend. And I felt immediately in love with this. Claudia is like the queen of skateboarding in Switzerland for me. Yeah, she's amazing. And every year there were one or two who got addicted to skateboarding. And there is a boom. Suddenly, so many girls showed up at our event. That was really cool. Just the whole like female skateboarding scene in Switzerland is like a big family. There's no girl, guy, they, them, whatever. It's like, if you skate, you skate. Everyone hangs out together. Yeah. Those are so cute. Yeah, that's yeah. us. So, if that's, so that, that's you and that's yeah. you. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Basel's over, we pack our bags again, and we get onto the next train, and we get to Zurich. And 
Our introduction to Zurich is another DIY spot, and it's called The Beast. We built this in 2011, after we had some little DIY spots in Zurich, but there was no public skate park or anything transition related. So we thought, yeah, let's go for it and just start digging. And since then, every year, we do a big party. It's 10 years fest, yeah. It's always fun because everyone from all Switzerland comes along, some guests from all the countries. It's always a big family gathering, enjoying for everyone. Actually, Muna's idea to paint it as a rainbow. The rainbow is, for me, it's important because, I don't know, like, it's such a theme right now everywhere. Like in Switzerland, it's quite easy to out yourself, or like if you compare it to other countries. So yeah, it's for sure a theme. And the beast is just like paradise for me. So even at the beast, slowly but surely, everyone we had met along the way in Switzerland was there. I guess it was a classic skate event that we all we've all grown to love. The beast family. So open-minded and such a creative place. Everyone can join, everyone can be there. It's rough to skate, so. You can imagine why it's called The Beast. It's not easy to skate. It's lumpy, it's bumpy, but it's so much fun. I feel like spots like that force you to get more creative and it forces you to concentrate. That's what, what skateboarding is all about. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a pro or just a beginner. Everyone is happy when you learn a trick. We go from this beast in Zurich to this basement in Bern. So you get to this apartment block, and you think that's a normal apartment block, and then you slowly descend into this basement that's been turned into this DIY escape park. So uh, we're about to check out Mooseback DIY. And it snakes through all the pillars that are actually like the structural pillars that hold the building up and it's just fun and tight and really weird to skate. It's pretty much my favorite thing to do. Skateboarding is something you do by yourself, for yourself, but it's so much more fun with other people. I just love my skater girls and I don't know where I would be without them. And this DIY scene is so, it's like family. And every, everyone is so open. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. That's it for Switzerland. See you next time.